Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, I'm fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Software testing. The moment I say the word software testing, I am pretty sure some of you might be thinking about, hey Hitesh, we are gonna talk about Selenium, Appium, maybe Mocha, or maybe some other tool. While that's also true that software testing involves some part of these tools, but it's almost saying that I want to talk about the design. So you might be saying, you, you want to talk about Photoshop or Illustrator. Now here's my point. Software testing is an amazing subject, but just saying that Selenium is software testing, it's almost like saying that I know how to draw rectangles, circles, and triangles. That means I'm an amazing designer, which is far from reality. Just like in order to become an amazing designer, you have to have a different mindset about colors, the typing, the typography, and a whole bunch of other aspects as well. Similarly, software testing is a little bit different from just knowing its tool. It's just a part of software testing. Oh, a fair warning before we get started in this video. If you are here in this video, just to make sure that you cramp up something so that you can throw that in the exam, this is not a video you should be watching for. This video is moreover about a practical guide of software testing, how you can get started in that, and how you can perform an entire career in the software testing life cycle. I'm gonna be also recommending you some of the books that you should absolutely read if you are interested in software testing. And apart from that, I'll also mention a couple of tools that are like kind of add-ons and are used by actual companies like Capgemini and Deloitte. A lot of time, freshers, when they walk into these MNCs and companies and see these kind of new tools, they get a little bit scared. So I'm here to just introduce you some of these tools in fairly advance. So now that the warning is out, let's get started and talk about software testing. Hey, if you're thinking that I'm going to be talking about the software testing with having the words like software development lifecycle, static testing, dynamic testing, black box testing, white box testing, no, this is not again that kind of a video. These are really good terms that I think every software tester should know, but these are really good for exams and for theoretical purpose. Absolutely compulsory that you should know a little bit about them. But that's it. That's all about it. The real world scenario of the software testing is a little bit different. Surely I'll recommend you some of the good industry standard books that you should read. But apart from that, giving too much of the emphasis in just the theoretical definition is not a good idea. So let's first talk about what is software testing. The software testing is a simple way of testing your code so that your code actually works that how it was intended to work, not from the programmer's perspective, from a real world perspective, from a user perspective. Many times when we write the code, we get so much involved in it that we stop thinking like a regular person or how a regular user is gonna interact with your software. And that includes a lot of bugs at a later time. So it's a job of software tester to think having a mindset about uh, how these problems can be approached, how I can convey these problems to the software developer so that these problems can be resolved and a whole bunch of things. It's not just about knowing your tools, it's more about a mindset that you should have, a mindset for solving the problems. That's basically your software testing. Now, this next statement might hurt some of the testers out here, but software testing is still considered as an entry-level job in majority of the companies, including MNCs. And uh, it might be a sad truth, but I have to put out the truth in front of you. Software testers are paid a little bit less compared to the software developers. Uh, obviously, software developers get interacted with more amount of code as compared to testers. And one of the reasons why majority of people want to get into software testing because they think, I, I'm not really good in coding, that's why I think I should opt out for software testing which is again not a good way of approaching the software testing and also not a good idea in the long term. Now definitely it is true that if you are not that much good and interactive with the coding part, you can definitely start with uh, software testing, but hear me out on this very serious issue. Now software testing in the initial phase doesn't actually require that much of the code to be interacted. But as you move on into the software testing cycle, you are going to write some of the scripts and automation tasks, which you can write much more easier, easily if you have more amount of programming knowledge. And I have personally seen my friends who have little bit of good skills in programming have moved way far in the software testing as compared to my other friends who were not good in, in the programming and they are still like it 
it's like four or five years that they have switched on to this next job and still writing all the manual tests because they are still scared of programming. That's why their growth is almost stopped. So programming is also going to help you in the part of software testing as well in the long run. I will come back onto this point of why developers are actually getting paid more compared to software testers. But right now, let me just walk you through and introduce you some of the terms that you're going to see quite a lot while learning or reading out about software testing. Now, software testing is of variety of types and there are a variety of tools that you use while doing these kinds of tests for software. Now, some of the things that you're going to hear a lot, one of them is unit testing, which is the most common one. Now, there are definitely more, but let's touch a little bit on the unit testing because as a programmer also, you write a lot of unit testing code. To give you a very bare minimum example, let's just say you have a class where you add two numbers, you have a class where you subtract two numbers, and you write another class for multiplication. In a unit testing, you actually verify that this multiplication doesn't make a mess in the class for addition or subtraction as a standalone class of multiplication. It should just work fine. And so is for addition and subtraction. That's a very boiled down example of unit testing. Now, apart from unit testing, you're also going to hear other things like scaling or performance testing or things like API testing, front end testing, back end testing, and a whole bunch of other testings as well, including penetration testing. And by the way, if you want me to make a separate video on penetration testing, I surely can do that. I have a good amount of experience in penetration testing as an early phase of my career as well. So surely you can write down in the comment section and we can discuss that in the upcoming video. Now let's talk about some of the critical things about software testing. Now software testing many times is considered as it's not as code intensive as software development and which is to certain point and certain degree is correct. Software testing is not just about the tools. It's moreover a mindset of finding out what is the root cause of the problem. Because when you have a root cause, it's not really easy for programmers to understand that what it is just causing the problem and why my software is not being used by the users the way I have designed it. And that's the thing what a tester actually looks out and try to figure out that how to resolve it. To give you a bare minimum example, let's just say you have a login screen where you have like email and password and you just hit the login. This is how programmers think that everybody is going to just first enter the email, then password and then hit the login. But a user is a little bit tricky to understand than that. Sometimes users just hit the login directly or just enters the password and try to log in. So you have to be absolutely sure in the testing process that that should not be the case. All the programmers are going to think, hey, who does that? But there are a lot of people who are actually going to do that. Software testing is moreover a mindset. Plus, this mindset is accomplished by some of the great tools that you can have to fast forward your task. One of the main tools which is talked quite a lot and is almost an industry standard is Selenium. The reason why Selenium is so much popular because it's compatible with multiple programming language, including the most popular one, Python and Java. Now, although the code, the amount of code and the complexity of the code that you write either in Python and Java using the Selenium is very, very less compared to the production. And that's the one of the reason why most people actually opt for the testing purpose as well. Now, the Selenium and Appium are the tools which actually can enhance your productivity. And it's not like that all the time people use the core of Selenium. Many of the big companies like Deloitte, Capgemini and couple of others as well actually add on uh, other tools on their Selenium as well so that they can fast process the activity of the testing. And this brings us to the amazing sponsor of this video. Thank you so much. Uh, because of you, I was able to make amazing videos and able to produce such, of, such high quality videos. So a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Lambda Test. Now, Lambda Test helps you to perform automated and live interactive cross-browser testing for the front end. And what's amazing is they help you to perform these cross-browser testing on 2000 plus real browser and operating system. With Lambda Test, user can perform Selenium based automated testing and live interactive, interactive testing with ease. Now, one good thing that is about uh, this Lambda Test is they allow you to test their software pretty easily. They offer a lifetime free plan so that you can actually test out that your front end of your website or any project that you're working on how good it is performing on variety of browsers in the combination of variety of operating system. Now, surely that can be done manually, 
But installing these number of operating systems and on top of that, you have to install so many of the browser is actually a painstaking task. Surely can be done, but who would want to install like 20 different versions of Chrome? It's going to be a nightmare. Now, just as a fun activity, since Lambda test also allows us to have a free account, let's do a fun activity. Just whatever the project you have worked on, any kind of front end website that you have hosted or any favorite website that you are having in the mind, just create an account since they do have a free access as well. Just open that, enter the URL and try to find out that how that website is performing on different versions of browser and share a story or Instagram post for that as well. That would be a surely fun exercise. Now, these kinds of tools like Lambda test are being used by a variety of big companies and they surely 100% actually fast forward our work, at least in the front end cycle. Now, on to a final note, I would like to touch upon uh, another subject of this uh, testing. And after that, I'll recommend you some book as well. Now, testing is amazing. But what happens to usually the people, especially in India, is you learn a bit and pieces about the testing and yet then you move on to some MNC. Now these MNCs usually have these outsource project in which you do all kind of testing and that is no bad. The bad thing actually starts when you are stuck in the company because the work that you are going to do in these companies, if you are lucky, if you are not on the bench, let's just say you are lucky and you are doing the job in those MNC. So your job basically is to write some of the test scripts for that. You are being given a manual and in that manual, uh, it's a very heavy documented process. You have to write manual the test for like this line, this line and this line. Now at first it's really good for initial couple of years, but things actually get crazy and a little bit problematic when you move in the sum of the years in your life. The reason for that is software testing is not just about writing test a script. Surely that's one of the job that you do. That's one of your responsibilities that you have to do. But that doesn't mean you always have to do that. As a software tester, you have to continuously move into the life. And that one of the part is simply to automate that task. And in order to automate again, you have to have a little bit of the programming skills and not just only that, you have to be involved in the software development cycle as well. What are the requirements? What are the programmers that are talking about? How the database is interacted? I'm not saying you need to be a guru in that, but you need to have some kind of involvement in that testing, uh, in that development cycle as a tester as well. If that is the job that you're doing, that means that's amazing. You're moving somewhere into your career at kind of enhancement for your life. As a tester, a lot of people think that it's going to be just writing test cases and maybe at a max automation, but it's not like that. It's more about analytical thinking, understanding a bits and pieces about the code process, your database modeling, your design cycle, and a whole bunch of other things that are involved in the testing as well. Now, before you move ahead into any kind of software testing tool learning process or anything, I would personally highly recommend you a book, which is, I would say that holy grail of the testing itself. It's not a very expensive book, a very, very an affordable price. It's known as Software Testing Technique. It's by author Boris. I'll again link down that also in the description section below. A very, very affordable book. I think it's like 300 or 350 rupees. And I think this is a book which everybody should read, even if you have like remote interest in the software testing. I read that like really a while ago, but I think that is absolutely necessary. There are a couple of other books as well that we can talk probably in the later on or some other videos as well. But right now I'll link down that in the description section. 100% absolutely be sure if you're looking forward in software testing, you should definitely check that out. And once again, a big shout out and a big thanks for sponsoring this video to Lambda Test. And in case you don't know, Lambda Test is being used by a variety of MNCs as well. So go ahead, check them out and at least give them a try, at least try their free plan. And if it makes sense for your company, uh, they're having a very affordable plan. So check them out. If they make sense, just go ahead and, and give them a try. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to know more amazing videos on this channel that keeps on popping up almost every week, like so many of them every week. And make sure you hit that like button as well. That's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush.